is the president. Hi everyone, Sarah Barker, the founder of Connect Our Elders. And today I'm really excited to have with us the president of Retirement Genius, Chris Orestes, presenting on alternative funding solutions for long-term care. As many of you guys know, often every day, we encounter families that are struggling on a daily basis with how they will be able to afford the costs of long-term care. Today, we have with us Chris, who is a national expert on this very topic. He will be covering long-term care, life settlements, reverse mortgages, VA aid and attendance, insurance and annuities, and senior bridge loans. We're really appreciative that you guys hear because more and more we are encountering people that are struggling to figure out how exactly their loved ones can cover the cost of care. So we want to ensure that you have these solutions in your toolbox so that way collectively we can all appropriately help families across the country. Chris, thank you so much for being here today. Sarah, thank you. And thank you everybody for joining today's webinar. And this is a really important topic. I'm glad to be covering it. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of depth we could go into in every one of those funding areas. And in, in future sessions, we will either me or other experts that that we and Sarah all work with. But we thought we'd today bring to your attention a variety of solutions to help families address the biggest challenge they have when it comes to accessing the care that they need and, and being in the environment that they want to receive it. When people are, are struggling to, to deal with the reality of long-term care, they're, they're trying to figure out two things, where and what is the right care to get and how do we pay for it? And the how do we pay for it part ends up being a huge roadblock. And so for you that are on this call that are care providers, care advisors, working in the care uh, world, you want to be fluent in being able to talk about solutions. You want to be a solution provider beyond just what you do for your living, because you need to bring the total package to the table if you're going to help a family achieve what they're trying to, to take care of for themselves or a loved one. And so for the next 20, 30 minutes, that we're, that's what we're going to focus on today. So I'm Chris Arrestus. I'm the president of a company called Retirement Genius. We're an information and resource platform to help families achieve a well-balanced retirement. We focus on financial planning, health and long-term care security, and lifestyle enrichment. Our goal is to bring these things together to help people retire like a genius. And a big part of what people do not plan for, they, they, they take for granted the idea that they're never going to need long-term care. You've got a real shortfall of people preparing for long-term care. It's just, a, it's a topic that's uncomfortable. They don't want to deal with it. It's confusing. It's just something that they, that they would rather avoid if they could. And you, I am sure, are very frustrated de dealing with this all the time people who have kicked that can down the road until all of a sudden they're in a crisis situation and they're turning to you to solve their crisis and, and they just don't know what, what they're dealing with. The reality is, is that 70% of people that are over the age of 65 are going to need some form of long-term care in their lifetime. And, and it's just a huge problem because the reality is 70% of people are going to need care but 85% of people don't believe they'll ever need care in the future. There's a huge disconnect between what people believe and what the reality of the situation is, which breeds a lot of confusion when people get to the point that they're trying to figure out what kind of care are we going to get and, and how do we pay for it? And that's where your expertise becomes so important. You want to put yourself in a position that you're not just able to talk about the one thing you do, you need to have a broader perspective about what kind of care is out there, what's the appropriate forms of care, and then the big, uh, the big stumbling block helping people overcome, how do you pay for it? The reality is long-term care is expensive. These are the national average numbers uh, from 2021 
Uh, and, and, and for families running into these numbers and oftentimes more than this, this is, this is becomes an almost impossible hill to climb to come up with this kind of funding. If they don't have long-term care insurance, they don't have the ability to, to, to cover the out-of-pocket element of, of, of the costs of care, get, be able to access home care, be able to get into an assisted living community, uh, have to face the prospects of a spend down to get onto Medicaid. Uh, people, people really put themselves into a tough situation when they hit these numbers and this becomes more than, than theory, it becomes their reality. What they need to do to navigate the system, that's where you come in. You're, you're the ones who are able to give them advice, help them understand what is and isn't covered uh, when it comes to the different forms of care, what Medicare can do, what health insurance, long-term care insurance can do, what Medicaid can do. And ultimately, if somebody's private pay, then that puts them in the best position to maintain control of their care options, their care decisions, and helping to protect their own family members and their financial situation from getting sucked into the, the situation. The more you are able to guide people to financial solutions, the better off everybody's going to be, and the more likely you are, it is for your business that you're going to have qualified people that can pay for your much-needed services. Now, Long-term care insurance is obviously a viable option to help people pay for the cost of care. But in a population in this country of over 330 million people, there's only seven and a half million enforced long-term care insurance policies today. So it's a small segment of the population that have long-term care insurance policies. And it's not even a guarantee that the people who own them will still own them by the time they need them. So it becomes uh, important to understand that, sure, when somebody's young and healthy, it's it's highly recommended that they buy long-term care insurance because they're going to be able to access it at good rates. They're going to be able to get good coverage options. But if they're coming to you at the time that they need care, it's way too late to buy long-term care insurance. So what are the other options that are available to them that they can access at the time they need care? The, it, as opposed to the opportunity that has passed to, to have been able to prepare and, and get long-term care insurance in place, there's still ways to handle an immediate need for care using alternative private pay options. And what I want to do is walk you through a variety of these options for you to be aware of and know that these are all accessible to you. You can incorporate, in fact, a number of these into your practice, not only as a tool to help families pay for care, but actually there are ways that you can uh, earn fees as well. Some, some will pay out referral fees, uh, depending on if you have certain licenses, you can earn money from using these, but that's a, that's a secondary consideration. The number one point is these are tools you can be, be referring families to to help them address the immediate need for care when it arrives. So let's start by looking at a reverse mortgage, otherwise known as a home equity conversion mortgage. This is an FHA insured non-recourse loan that will pay out either a lump sum, you can establish a monthly income, or you can get a line of credit established to access the equity value of your home without needing to be in a position to make monthly payments back on the money you've taken out. So the advantage of a reverse mortgage is you can get into the equity of your home without selling it. And you can, and you can establish a way to get either a lump sum, a monthly income or a line of credit without being in a position that you have to be making monthly payments. Now you will need to pay back a reverse mortgage uh, when you leave the home. Typically, if somebody's going to leave their home, they've got 12 months to, to satisfy the reverse mortgage, which will accrue interest and fees while, while the money is, is out there. Um, and oftentimes that's satisfied through the sale of a home. But to qualify for a reverse mortgage, somebody needs to be age 62 or older, 
The home needs to be their primary re residence. Uh, the, the upper limit today for reverse mortgage is $970,800. So a pretty high upper limit that, that people can tap into based on the value of their home and their equity. And as I mentioned, while that money is, is being lent to you and being used, you don't need to pay it back on a monthly basis, but you are going to accrue uh, interest and fees. Then there's the VA aid and attendance benefit which is, can establish a monthly long-term care benefit that's going to be paid to either the veteran, or a veteran or their spouse and or their spouse. So it, as long as either the veteran, their spouse, or both are alive, the, the VA aid and attendance benefit is an option they can access. So if a veteran alone is collecting it, you can see the amount they would collect on a monthly basis. If the veteran and spouse are both alive and uh, benefiting from collecting, that, that's the uh, number that they would be able to collect together. Or if it's just the surviving spouse, the veteran may not be alive any longer, but their spouse is, the spouse can still collect an amount of, of uh, benefit from the VA aid and attendance program. To be eligible for use of the VA aid and attendance, you would have to have been honorably discharged from the military having served a minimum of 90 days of active duty with one day served during an active period of war. That doesn't mean that the person had to be engaged in combat. It's just that you served while there was an active period of war, uh, which when you go back over the last 20, 30 years, it's a, it's, it's a pretty long sequence of what's considered active periods of war between Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Vietnam, you go back over, over the last 20, 30 years, active periods of war are pretty continuous. There are income and asset limits, similar to if you were applying for, say, Medicaid. You have uh, to be at, there's certain income and asset limits that you have to meet. Uh, the minimum age for eligibility is 65. And, there, and there's a medical necessity that either you have a disability or a need for long-term care services. So here's your eligibility requirements for the VA aid and attendance benefit. There's also senior bridge loans. This is basically a home equity line of credit that's secured against the home. And it allows the borrower to borrow just what they need on a monthly basis against their house until the loans are paid with those funds being used towards uh, assisted living, uh, CCRC, so the funds can be used to pay entry fees, can be used to pay monthly fees. And it's the idea is you're bridging a time where a person has a need for care now, but it's going to take some time to sell the home. So a senior bridge loan is specifically designed to be able to access uh, the home on a month to month basis to just get what you need until the home is sale, until the home is sold or other resources can be brought forward. The payments are going to be, be made directly to the care provider. And then uh, unlike a reverse mortgage where you have no monthly payment obligations, in a senior bridge loan, you do have monthly obligations, but it's interest-only payments uh, to, to, to carry that until it's satisfied. Then there are some annuity tools that are very interesting to use. There's the Medicaid-compliant annuity which is a spend down strategy. So if somebody's in a Medicaid spend down and they have a, a spouse that's gonna remain at home, isn't going to be applying for Medicaid, it allows a portion of money to be preserved for the spouse in a Medicaid compliant annuity, in essence, for a short period of time while the, while the other is going on to Medicaid and moving into some form of care. So this is a way to avoid going towards Medicaid and, and the fear that it's going to bankrupt or impoverish the spouse and the loss of home, the loss of income, meeting those, those income and asset requirements to qualify for Medicaid. It's an irrevocable, non-assignable annuity and it needs to be for a time period that matches what actuarially is predicted for the remaining life expectancy of the person going on to Medicaid. So if there's a thought that this person's going to be alive for another two, three, four years, the annuity payments would be 
specifically designed to, to pay out over that time period in equal amounts. And then the state itself is named as a primary or contingent beneficiary. So they have an opportunity to recover some of the money they've outlaid in Medicaid payments. Uh, but you've put the person who needs to continue to receive income, stay in their home in a position that they've protected their money through an annuity while their loved one goes on to Medicaid. Then there's a medically underwritten single premium immediate annuity, a SPIA, is an annuity that's established with one payment, one amount of money, and then the payments start immediately. Now there's a medically underwritten version of this type of annuity that's offered specifically to pay out a higher amount on a monthly basis for somebody who is going into care, for somebody who needs uh, a, a guaranteed income stream to cover home care or assisted living costs or whatever form of long-term care supports and services that they need. Uh, it is a higher payout than a non-underwritten annuity. And the idea is you're putting in money that's gonna pay out at this higher level and it is then a guaranteed income stream for the remainder of that person's life. So it removes that fear of running out of money. You've put money into this, into this medically underwritten SPIA. You've established a monthly amount that's going to be paid out towards whatever your care needs are. And that will continue guaranteed for the remainder of that person's life. So if that person lived another five or 10 years, those payments would continue every month without interruption. There's also something called um, the Pension Protection Act annuity, a PPA annuity. This is a tax-free annuity option that allows people to put money into an annuity with a long-term care conversion option. So to, it's, and to qualify, it's pretty simple. You're, 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 you will answer some health questions through a phone interview, fill out an application, and then the person who's put money into the annuity if they have a two ADL or more trigger, that will increase the amount of money value in the annuity by threefold, which becomes then a tax-free pool of funds for long-term care. So let's say somebody put $100,000 into the PPA annuity, and then that money was sitting there. They, that, that's what they hope, that's what they have in place to, to use for long-term care services. And then they trigger the 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 uh, LTC uh, conversion with two ADLs or more that hundred thousand is now three hundred thousand dollars to be paid out on a monthly basis towards their care needs. So a very effective way to use a specified annuity for long term care monthly payments that will increase the value of that money by three x when the time for care is needed. Then there's another area, and this is something that we have special, specialized in, particularly at Retirement Genius over the years. We, we actually helped to create this particular financial tool. It's called an LTC life settlement or a long-term care life settlement. It's the use of a life settlement to pay for long-term care with, with a life insurance policy. So somebody who owns a life insurance policy owns an asset. That has value that they can access to pay for their long-term care services by selling the policy off through a transaction called a life settlement. And some of you may be familiar with that. Uh, there's a lot of TV commercials that you see running every day about life settlements. If you no longer need or no longer want a life insurance policy, you can sell it for a portion of its death benefit value today. And for people who have a long-term care need, it's a very tax advantage way to, to meet immediate care needs. If you have two ADLs or more, or two years or less of remaining life expectancy, then all the funds from this life settlement, LTC life settlement transaction are tax-free. Any form of care will qualify to, to pay out from the long-term care life settlement towards care needs. And there's no costs whatsoever to 
access a life settlement. There's no fees. There's no out-of-pocket costs because you're selling off an asset. A life insurance policy is an asset owned by the owner, and they can sell it off for a portion of the death benefit today. They're released from any more obligations, such as making premium payments, and the entire transaction takes about 90 days where the funds are then available and can be paid towards any form of care somebody wants. Remember, life insurance policies are an asset that have value that can be used for by typically seniors. It's, it's really a transaction designed for people who are, are older and, and have impaired health, chronic health conditions, maybe even terminal health conditions. Uh, so they can tap into that life insurance policy now for liquidity to meet their, their long-term care and senior living needs. Uh, this has grown into a very mainstream financial option. It's recognized and used by and accepted by every form of care provider in the United States. And to qualify, typically, it's people who have chronic or deteriorating health conditions, loss of cognitive function, ADLs, uh, an immediate need for care for an LTC life settlement will trigger the tax-free status. Typically, it's going to be somebody with a remaining life expectancy under 10 years. The, remember this, the older and sicker somebody is, the more they're going to get from a life settlement. If somebody's too young and healthy, they're not going to qualify for a life settlement. I would venture to guess that everybody on today's call would not qualify for a life settlement if it was something that you thought you wanted to take a look at. Any type of policy, term life, universal life, whole life, variable life, any form of life insurance policy is going to qualify. The minimum death benefit typically is going to be $100,000 or greater. Again, any form of care qualifies. It's about a 90-day process to complete it, and, and the funds are then available. There's no costs. There's no more premium payments. There's no wait periods, and that's important. Unlike, say, a long, triggering a long-term care insurance benefit where you have to get through a 90-day wait period, the, the funds are immediately available when the settlement is complete, and there's no claims to file. As soon as you have those, those settlement funds, you can use them for any kind of care you want, any amount you need to spend for as long as you have uh, the funds in place. It's a Medicaid qualified spend down because you're getting rid of a life insurance policy asset and then spending those funds on care inside the look back period. So anybody who has a life insurance policy, they think they're going to get rid of the policy just for Medicaid spend down purposes alone should be looking at this as an alternative because let's say they have $2,000, $3,000 of cash surrender value in a policy but the settlement value is twenty-five dollars or $30,000, which typically the difference from a life settlement to cash surrender value is between five and 10 times greater in a settlement value to uh, cash surrender value. This becomes a very, very strong option to get the most out of that life insurance policy asset. Uh, as I reviewed, tax treatment for, for the transaction is very favorable for somebody who has uh, immediate need for care, two ADLs or more, or two years of life expectancy or less. So what's important to remember in the position that you're in as you're talking to families, as, as they're coming to you as an expert in long-term care, as I said at the beginning, you want to be more than just able to talk about only what you do. You want to have a more well-rounded ability to talk about the broader scope of how to find and what is the, the most appropriate forms of care, and then what are the options that people can turn to to pay for it. Now, in this conversation, I've focused on private pay. I didn't get into Medicare. I didn't get into Medicaid. I'm leaving those out of this conversation because you want to have these various private pay options at your disposal, because for many people, they don't realize these are things they can do. They don't realize 
maybe because they're a veteran, they can access that VA aid and attendance benefit or through the, the, the ownership of their home, they have some options, either a reverse mortgages or senior bridge loan to tap into that home to help pay for their care needs or a variety of ways to tap into annuities that they can access immediately. Or if they have a life insurance policy, being able to use that, the, that life insurance policy through a long-term care life settlement instead of abandoning it after years of making premium payments. So for those people who haven't adequately planned for care, these are a variety of private pay options that you should have in your toolbox so that they, that they can understand they, they're not out of luck. If they didn't buy a long-term care insurance policy, that doesn't mean that they have no more options. They actually have a very a wide range of options. If they knew about them, they could then start to pursue those and you would get the credit for having pointed them in that right direction. So this is all ways to, these are all options that within 90 days or less, people could access funding. And it puts you as a care provider in that position to have this in your toolbox to help clients that are in need of long-term care. You are the trusted expert and you want to be in a position to, to bring this, these kinds, this kind of information, these kinds of solutions to the table. So as a follow-up to today's webinar, uh, we are going to make sure that we get out to you actually a, a retirement genius tip sheet. It's a white paper that will cover these alternative funding strategies uh, in, in, a, in a neat uh, package that you'll be able to refer to. Uh, this is our phone number. If you need anything, if you want anything, if you want to talk to our team about making sure that you're set up to be able to access these, these options, uh, we're standing by to help you. And we're going to make sure that we get you a recording of the, of the webinar as a follow-up as well. And I invite you to visit our websites. The, our consumer website is retirementgenius.com. Our website built for advisors is advisors.retirementgenius.com. Of course, I, I'd like to point out too, if you if you have time, if you listen to podcasts, check out our podcast, Retirement Genius. We're a Forbes uh, podcaster and you'll find us on the Forbes network. All you got to do wherever you get your podcasts, just type in Retirement Genius and you'll find us there. And we invite you to follow us and check out our episodes where we've talked about all these kinds of issues around retirement, long-term care, a variety of issues that impacts seniors in this country every day. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to have had the time to speak to you all today. And Sarah, thank you so much for inviting me to come on and talk to some of your, your, your folks. You work with so many great people. We all share the same passion. We all share the same mission to help people. And, and these are some tools that you can use to accomplish that mission. Chris, thank you so much for your time today. Highly valuable information. Um, I do want to reiterate, as Chris said, if you have additional questions, do not hesitate to reach out um, to me um, or view the website, start listening to the podcast. Uh, you know, Connector Elders is very grateful to have Chris and Retirement Genius um, as a resource because more and more I'm seeing the struggle with families trying to figure out how they are going to cover the cost of care. Um, and I'm always surprised when many have never even heard of aid and attendance or what a life settlement is or understand um, how these various resources work. So please continue to get educated so that way we can help more and more families across the United States. Thank you everyone for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.